Hello everyone and welcome to another RC review. Today we are going to take a look at the FPV camera. Uh, this is a kit, it's a camera and also a transmitter. Uh, they are made by AKK Technology. Uh, here is a glimpse of their website and the specifications for the camera. It's a Sony CCD camera. Uh, it has uh, 600 uh, lines and it has a uh, Sony Super HD to CCD and uh, the video transmitter has uh, 600 milliwatts of power and uh, 40 channels. In the box uh, you will get first a remote uh, control for the Sony camera. Uh, this will connect to a power supply and uh, this is analogic video out. This you are going to connect to a regular monitor or a television. And uh, here you have a small joystick. This will uh, connect to the camera itself and uh, you will access the OSD of the camera and you can set a lot of uh, things in there regarding white balance, shutter speed, uh, noise reduction uh, and uh, much, more, much more other settings. And this is uh, the camera itself, comes with a protective cap for the lens, it has manual adjustable focus, it comes uh, pre-focused, so no need to adjust that from start. Uh, this is the small connector here. And uh, that's about the camera. Uh, you also get a pack of mounting harder. It has a regular bracket, it has four screws, and of course it has a cable for FPV. It has power, video, and ground. Further on in the box, you will get the transmitter. The 600 milliwatts transmitter, as you can see. It's uh, very small for uh, its uh, power output, 40 channels. It has two switches here, one is for changing channels, the other is for changing frequencies. It has uh, two LED digits on the back, it will show you the setting. And it also comes with its own cable. I like the fact that the cables are uh, uh, twisted, the wires will not uh, tangle uh, very easy. It's a good idea to ship them this way and uh, they tend to last a bit more when uh, you are using them in uh, this shape and the connector will go like this and here you get a cable for uh, video output power and ground and this is for supplying uh, power to the video transmitter in the box you also get manuals for uh, this is for the video transmitter and this is for the Sony camera. It has a full menu walkthrough here and it shows each setting for the OSD menu and how to navigate it. There are a lot of settings here. The menu is uh, in English and it's very well written. And most of the settings have some specifications so you will get an idea of uh, how to set them to obtain your desired uh, results. I'm now going to quickly show you how the OSD works and uh, what uh, settings uh, this little camera has. Uh, I'm going to connect the remote cable to it. On the other side I'm going to connect this uh, analog video cable that goes into the television and I'm going to use uh, the DC jack to power uh, the camera, I'm using uh, 12 volts. Uh, the camera supports wide voltage from uh, 5 volts to 20 volts and uh, that is very good because you have a lot of options to uh, supply power to it. Okay, hopefully it will stay here. And I'm going to remove the lens cap and let me zoom on to the television. Okay, so we have image there and if I press the remote button I get into the lens uh, option first but this is the menu so it starts with lens option uh, of course this is manual because uh, the camera has a manual lens so I'm going to move on exposure and exposure you have shutter speed you have a lot of options here you can uh, lock the shutter speed or set it to automatic, brightness of the camera, 
auto gain control uh, dynamic wide dynamic range this will uh, improve uh, contrast between uh, light and uh, dark areas uh, and we can return white balance it has automatic white balance automatic white balance too uh, you can set your own you can select manual and then change settings as you would like uh, you have profiles or you have blue and red settings and uh, that will make your image look exactly like you would like to uh, backlight this is for backlight compensation especially when you film against uh, highlights okay day and night this is for uh, switching the camera to black and white color or letting it choose automatically this is for improving the image quality uh, black and white is better for low light while color is preferred on daytime so I'm just going to leave it auto but for FPV uh, it will be better to leave it on uh, color and lock it that because otherwise it will switch from color and uh, uh, black and white and maybe that will not be perfect for you uh, DPC here is for uh, calibrating the CCD for removing hot pixels it has a built-in uh, correction you just cover the lens put the camera in a dark area start that and if you have white spots on the image they will be automatically corrected on the special uh, menu you get an option for cam title I believe here yes you can put a name to be displayed on the camera just like that and it's a bit complicated as you need to move in this matrix with up down left right okay so I have put letter A but I'm going to turn it off uh, motion this is for motion detection this is mostly for other things like surveillance privacy you can mask some uh, of the image park line you can use this camera on a car and you have uh, guidelines for reversing your car this could be useful you can use FPV for that image adjust you have here options for um, uh, noise reduction you can uh, mirror the image turn it around font colors contrast sharpness uh, type of display uh, you can even uh, make the image negative reverse the colors and of course you can always return uh, this here communication adjustment this is for connecting the camera to other protocols language for the OSD the version of the camera and I can return back and reset we will make all the settings back to default so those are all the settings in the camera menu for now and you can see it very easy to set up so let's move on further I'm now going to remove uh, the camera um, OSD controller the remote and I'm going to connect the regular FPV cable the one that only uses video and power I'm going to connect that to the output cable of my video transmitter it's output for power input for video so it does both of them uh, this uh, transmitter here also has its voltage regulator for the camera and it will send out regulated 5 volts while uh, this can uh, work up to 20 volts also so you can use it with 2s lipo 3s lipos with no problem so i'm going to use a small 3s lipo for a test before powering uh, it up it's very important to first install the antenna otherwise you can uh, damage this uh, thing instantly this is uh, available for almost all uh, fpv transmitters out there because uh, the output power must uh, go somewhere and if it does not have an antenna it will feed back uh, into its output uh, stages and uh, burn them so antenna is connected camera is connected i'm going to power it on 
and we get an indication here it's an A1 let me zoom in so that's the display working there I'm going to take the camera lens cap off it's already off and now I'm going to power on the FPV monitor and I'm going to uh, use the transmitter uh, functions to change the frequency and channel uh, as this monitor only has a few channels only eight channels so I don't know if it's going to uh, be on the same frequency with this so it's easier for me to change the transmitter frequencies so let's see uh, we get some static there I'm on the first A band so look at that on A8 it's working already I have clear image sharp image good colors of course there is no lag no visible lag and it kind of works out of the box as you can see uh, the transmitter is uh, already a bit warm but nothing uh, exceptional I'm going to let it run a bit here of course when you use this outside on a quadcopter or drone the air current uh, will uh, cool it down this is just on a table at uh, 24 degrees indoor let's see if it's going to get hot or not so it's been over uh, 10 minutes uh, since uh, the camera and uh, video transmitter are running you can see here are 11 uh, minutes soon to be 12 and uh, I'm going to measure uh, the temperature of uh, the transmitter because it's a good thing to know if uh, it's going to overheat or not so I'm going to use uh, this so I'm almost at uh, 70 degrees as you can see 69.7 which is a bit high but uh, as I've told you this is uh, uh, here on a bench with no air current to uh, cool it off so this mounted on uh, the tail of uh, an airplane or uh, somewhere near uh, airframe where the motors are spinning on a quadcopter uh, it will be cooled down so no problem there let's see on uh, the other side 68 degrees so it's not bad but it's not cool either uh, this definitely needs uh, air current around it for uh, having it a uh, long lifespan. So uh, this was uh, just part one of uh, this uh, video review because this was uh, just a bench review and camera presentation. A final test will be mounting this on a quadcopter or uh, on one of my planes and uh, try to test uh, its uh, range to see if the 600 milliwatts will uh, take it uh, far uh, I believe this uh, will go to uh, one or two kilometers easy in uh, this configuration but uh, hopefully we'll uh, see that uh, soon until next time bye bye